96.7 FM, WORX. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. It is 9.06 AM, 70 degrees here on Telegraph Hill, and it is the first Tuesday in the month of October. That means it's time once again for Veterans Talk. AJ Bramer here in studio, joined as always by State District Service Officer Joe DeVito. Hello, Joe. Good morning, AJ. How are you doing today? Hey, so far so good. How are you? I'm hanging in there. I'm recovering from a long Chautauqua weekend. We had quite a bit going on this weekend here in Madison with Chautauqua, old court days. Uh, definitely a good time for folks to get out. The weather was great. It was perfect. The heat held off. It was nice and cool, and we had great crowds. And once again, Madison was shining strong. It was great. And if you were down in Chautauqua, you were, of course, over by the Lanier Mansion. And joining us for this month's edition of the show, we have the site manager over at the Lanier Mansion from the Indiana State Museum. That is Catherine Williams. Catherine, thanks for coming on the program. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So, Joe, why is Catherine here? Catherine's here for uh, a couple reasons. <laughs> um, we are um, here to promote an event coming up on October 12th. It's a Friday, 5.30 p.m. up at the Indiana Veterans Memorial Cemetery. And we're, um, it's uh, the, the last event, culminating event, of the uh, World War I Centennial Celebration this year. Uh, the State Museum and uh, the Indiana World War I Centennial Commission have had events throughout the year um, kind of commemorating the war and it's uh, the final event coming up is going to be here in Madison uh, because not just because it's a wonderful town or the host city of the Indiana Veterans Memorial Cemetery but also because we're honoring Samuel Woodfill who is a native of our area and is considered by some to be the hero of World War I. Um, so we're going to talk about him a little bit today and talk about the event. Um, Catherine and I both work for the state of Indiana, so we've been kind of the li liaisons here in town, setting the event up for the last year, working hard with our local community and with our council and other folks that we'll get into. So we want to promote that event. And uh, also, I want to uh, let folks know Catherine is a, a veteran as well. And as you know, the main gist of what we always want to get across in our, our show here is for folks to get to their county veteran service officer. And I believe you've already been, haven't you? I have, actually. I, I met Joe on a couple of different board meetings here in town. It's kind of all over the place. And uh, let him know I was a veteran as well. And we got to talking. And he set me up with Faith Weir. And um, been very helpful along the way. So I recommend to any veteran to so definitely reach out to your local offices and um, ask questions. See if there's always an answer. And that's the whole idea. Just that's the ticket. Touch. Yeah. That's right. And as we've covered, 315 Jefferson Street is where the Jefferson County Veteran Service Officer is. That's Faith Weir. She's there five days a week. And um, her phone number is 812-265-3600. So talking about Samuel Woodfill, um, World War One. obviously we are celebrating the centennial of that this year. World War One doesn't get talked about quite as much as World War Two does in terms of, you know, the movies and, you know, just the overall coverage of that. Uh, if you look back and you see an image of World War I presented in a history book, there's a very decent chance that Samuel Woodfill is one of those images. Absolutely. He is, he's been pretty well documented and well decorated. Um, and you said it's kind of a, you know, time goes on and it's up to... Uh, it's up to events like this um, and throughout the year, this particular event, to keep in mind, folks, that all those past events that happened, especially World War I. Um, it was a pretty devastating war. Um, and then to have somebody local right from here who was such a, such a hero of that war is amazing. Um, I know he's a Medal of Honor winner, plus plenty, many other uh, medals and awards, citations. There's a... At the historic museum downtown, there's they're they're building. Last week we're building. I think it should be ready to go now. But if you go into the museum, they've got uh, all his medals and awards. They've got an interactive display that you can go through and some great pictures. So I highly encourage anybody who's whether you're in a history or not, um, you're from this area, you live in the area now. He's a he is a, a hero of our time, of our area, so I suggest anybody go see, check out the interactive display. Yeah. And it is a free museum, so it's open to everybody, um, seven days a week, I believe, and yeah, I can take your kids, teach them about the history of not just uh, Samuel Woodville, but about Jefferson County and Madison, Indiana, and um, I think Woodville also has been a great contributor to many um, Hoosiers actually joining the military. Our, our keynote speaker is Major Ryan Gillis, um, coming from us all the way from Georgia, but he born and raised in Madison. The last name Gillis, I think quite a few people know that name around here. Um, he's a 
big time Woodfill fan. He's read all the books put out by him, people that have written about him, um, and he's one of the main reasons he decided to go into the military. So now he's a commander himself. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the influence alone of yeah. folks joining the military and knowing of the history and the folks here who've done things really encourages folks to do so. How cool is that? So what will be happening at the cemetery on the, that is the 12th, right? It is the 12th. Yep, coming up here on the 12th. It's going to be uh, an informative and fun and not too long program. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't drone on and on. Um, somehow they've decided to make uh, me the host or master of ceremonies of the event. So I know I like to talk, and if you're out there and you know that, I won't talk too much. I'll keep things moving. But we do have a great um, lineup of folks to come through and just kind of celebrate this event. Um, we're going to have a wonderful setup right at the cemetery. Uh, anybody who hasn't been to the cemetery, please go check it out. Take a tour, walk around. You can go. It's open. Um, you can probably catch some of the guys there and give you some information if you want it. I know they have a, an interactive... Um, set up where you can kind of type in someone's name on, on a looks like an ATM but it's not an ATM and you can kind of find the site you can look up see maybe you have family members there as well um, but it's just a beautiful facility it's maintained wonderfully um, Alan Burnham and the crew up there do a great job um, they work really hard at maintaining it and it just really helps helps you remember helps you feel pretty patriotic and nostalgic and to, to see all the the graves up there and how well it's done and how well it's um, laid out is it's a beautiful thing um, one of the folks that we've been working with and I brought up a, a ton in the past is the Jefferson County Veterans Council and uh, once again we have a big event coming up so uh, Alan Manning and the crew are deep into this event and uh, really it would not be happening without those folks again I know I've mentioned uh, before um, Alan Manning um, Larry Jones and uh, Robin Henderson are the, the key players of the Jefferson County Veterans Council, um, I can hardly keep up with them, and they, they are the go-getters. And it was maybe eight, nine months ago that this, this event came up, and they once again kind of grabbed a hold, took charge, and um, have really helped set the event up. So without them, this stuff doesn't happen. Uh, if you know those folks, see them in the community, make sure you thank them. Because, you know, from our, from our new memorial on the courthouse lawn to this project, to the banner project, they're, they're just a motivating force, and they get stuff done. So. so, Joe, we've been talking, you know, coming up October 12th, we have that event celebrating Sammy Woodfill and the centennial of World War One. Like we were talking, going to be a very exciting event. It is. We have, a, we have some great people coming in. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a about an hour, maybe less, kind of event up at the, at the cemetery. Um, we're going to have some local folks come and help us out, of course. Um, um, Lieutenant Vi Vinyl Lee from the Salvation Army, who's part of the Veterans Council and has helped out with other stuff in the past with us. He'll be doing the invocation. Um, and we're going to have some, uh, some special guests there, maybe say a quick few words. I know there's a representative from uh, Senator Donnelly's office will be there, as well as the mayor. Um, and, and one of the uh, commissioners will be represented as well. And um, I know we're going to hopefully get a word from, our, from Donna Weaver, who's uh, sculpted a bust of Samuel Woodfill that will be unveiled at the ceremony. So that's kind of exciting, too. So she'll be there, and the bust will be there, and that'll be something to come see as well, um, as well as our keynote speaker, who we spoke about a minute ago, uh, Major Ryan Gillis. So real excited to get him here. And so, Catherine, he's from Madison, correct? Yeah, so Major Ryan Gillis is from Madison, Indiana, born and raised. Um, he is always been very interested in World War One and just military history in general, but especially um, Woodfill. And uh, a lot of the reasons, like I was saying, one of the reasons he decided to go into the military is because of the background and all of this, and the inspiring stories he read about Woodfill. So um, when we asked him to come out and be the, the keynote speaker for this event, he was extremely honored. And um, he's really excited to get back, not only to his hometown, but to be here for such an important special event, not just to our community, but to him personally. Yeah, and that's real exciting to have somebody come and to be our speaker who's from Madison and, and not only from here inspired by Woodfill but is a buff he's a he's a Woodfill buff so it's real exciting to have him come um, we're also going to have direct descendant uh, Dr. Robert Woodfill he's a direct descendant of Samuel Woodfill and he's probably the buff on, on <laughs> Samuel Woodfill he knows plenty of things so he'll be here as well um, and he's been an integral part of this process of setting up the event as well yeah I, he's actually writing a seven-part series I believe that you can see in the Madison Courier I, it should be coming out 
this Wednesday. So tomorrow in Madison Courier, you, there'll be little inserts about Woodfill and about this event to give you more background information um, and to study up. That'd be something kind of neat to maybe keep um, for history. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, I don't want to get too deep into the details of um, what makes Samuel Woodfill the, the hero he was, but if you have an opportunity to read some of those things. Um, we've got a, a nice bio that's going to be in our, uh, our our brochure that we hand out at the event as well, but some seriously heroic stuff going on. I mean, the guy was, he was, he was brave and he was just a, a country guy from Madison and, and he stepped up and went to war and and did things that were far beyond the, the standard call of duty and, and deserves every uh, of all these awards and accolades and deserves to have the stuff that we're doing for him today and to be remembered the way he is. So, you know, I, I encourage anybody, get down to the History Center, uh, learn about him a little bit. There's there's a few books written about him, and, and this series coming out in the paper will be quite informative well, as well. So we really want to see everybody remember, the, remember him, remember the events, and remember the war as well. So... And there's, uh, there's, I know we had a, the interactive board here before, and the display is also from the state back down at our local museum as well. So there's a bunch of Hoosiers that were really integral in World War I all, from all across the state. So you can learn about them as well and kind of get you, it kind of brings it home when you see all these different folks from different areas just right here in Indiana that were such a big part of the war. So it's a, it's a great thing to go see, and we encourage folks to get down there. I think a lot of times... With that sort of event, you find out that you had family fight in the World War One that you may not have known about until uh, you looked into it a little bit. Yeah, that's absolutely true, and I know that you can research some of that down there at the History Center as well. And uh, you know, we have I think folks come in Woodfill uh, relatives from as far away as San Diego, I believe, are coming to town for the event too. So it's going to be a great event. It's at a great facility. Um, I do, I do know we're going to be uh, unveiling the bust. And we have a few other things that the Jefferson County Veterans Council has been working on that will be up there as well at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. As you remember, we, um, we replaced the memorial on the courthouse lawn last year. Um, and the stones that came down, um, we wanted to make sure that they were utilized in a, in a respectful and great way. So those are being repurposed for different things at the cemetery. So you can come up and see what's going on there. Um, we did the one POW MIA out of the one stone that we unveiled up there a little while back and you can see that plus some other things that are going on so the you know folks should know that we have the Jefferson County Veterans Council the Historic Society uh, those folks have been huge in this event as well the State Museum the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs there's a, there's a lot of folks working real hard around town to for this event and for other events and other things memorials to just keep you know keeping people's uh, minds not only the past wars, but our current military and the folks that are not just from here, but from all over the country that, you know, we have an active military. We have people working very hard from the past up until now. We want to keep that in everybody's mind. I think it's really important to remember the legacy and to continue to leave a legacy. Um, Madison especially, I moved here from San Antonio, Texas, and it really is a magical place. They call it the magical town of the Midwest. But uh, I think it's really important to remember these people that have done these great heroic things um, and to also lay the platform for our future, our future Hoosiers and our future Madisonians um, to show that they too can leave a legacy. So bring your family out. Um, it's definitely going to be a, a special evening. Absolutely. And I think that that's a wonderful point that Catherine had there. You know, Madison is magical. I mean, it's when you come to Chautauqua, you come downtown, you see the buildings and the history. There is a feel to Madison. I think it's important for uh, local folks to keep in mind and remember that something like that isn't just because of architecture. It isn't just because of a location on the river. It goes all the way back to it's 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 built up with steps, and and part of those steps are people like Sam Woodfill that go all the way back to World War One and behind. And so the history center of not just war of Madison, you can see all the different things that have that have happened here that are important, not only to Madison, but it were big events and big people that have helped create that that feeling that Madison has, so. It's the heartbeat. It sure is, and and the cemetery is another great thing, so we want folks to come up and really enjoy this evening with us and have a good time, and we'll see them all the next day at Soup, Stew, Chili, and Brew. When we do this show, one of the main things we talk about 
is taking care of our veterans and getting them in touch with our local veteran service office. Absolutely. You know, right here in Jefferson County, we have our own Jefferson County veteran service officer, Faith Weir. Uh, her and she's got staff down there, Sue Goins. They, they, they not only are extremely knowledgeable and great at their job, but they are so friendly, and that office is so welcoming. Um, and there's candy, so that's that's one thing to stop by. But the, you know, the, they will do a great job for any veteran or the dependent of a veteran just to go in and see what's available. We encourage everybody um, to to go see their county service officer. You may be hearing us in a different county. You may have relatives in other parts of the state. We have 92 counties. We have 92 county veteran service officers, and they're there to just kind of help any veteran that they meet with or a dependent uh, look over their paperwork, navigate state benefits and federal benefits, and figure out what might be available to you. And if they identify something, they'll help you package that claim, put it all together, gather the right documents, send it to the right place, and get that first step taken care of properly and uh, efficiently. And, and that's the key to a good claim, is getting it all done right the first time, put together, sent to the right place. And that's what we're working diligently to train and work with our county service officers. Um, we've had a, a, a massive increase in uh, expenditures into the state, and that's a direct result of the hard work they've been putting in. So these are the folks you want to go see. if you're in, And you really want to go. Um, you can generically look at the websites and other things and see how things work, but it's very individual to each veteran what you do or don't qualify for. So it's highly important to go meet with them, bring your, bring your uh, DD-214, your discharge papers, and find out specifically for you what, what works for you. And uh, I do want to thank Catherine for coming. And we did say you're the site manager at the Lanier Mansion, and she works for the Indiana State Museum. And I know that I thank you because with Chautauqua, we had some great um, use of the Lanier Mansion this year. And I think you have some events coming up. I definitely want you to talk about those. Yeah, we've got a lot of events coming up, actually. We're continuing with our ghost walks, which have been sold out. Um, but we also have some really neat events coming up in November and in December. We've got a Christmas open house December 9th, which is a free event for families. Uh, it'll be from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. with a Santa Claus and some live music inside the mansion. Um, so you want to come check that out. There have been a lot of changes to happen at the Lanier Mansion, so if you haven't been since you were in fourth grade, I highly recommend you come back and check it out as an adult. So. Absolutely. There's 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 new blood and new life going, and, and there's a lot of fun stuff going on there as well. So um, I'm excited about it. I want people to know to head out there. If you're out there and you're a veteran, the relative of a veteran, the friend of a veteran, there's a guy wearing a hat next to you where you're sitting right now that looks like a veteran hat. Encourage them to find their county veteran service officer and go see them. Uh, you can find all the county service officers at in.gov uh, forward slash DVA. That's our website. You can find a lot of information there as well as locate all your service officers. And in general, they're going to be at, near, or in the courthouse of, of every county. So that's where you can find them. You can walk in any courthouse, ask where that office is, and find out. So really want you to get down to your county service officer and see what benefits are available for you. Catherine Williams, the site manager over at the Lanier Mansion. Anything else you'd like to add before we go? Oh, thank you so much for having me today. And uh, come on out and see the exhibit at the History Center next to the Lanier Mansion. And also come by and see us at the Lanier Mansion. We thanks. definitely appreciate you coming on the program. All right. Thanks, AJ. Anything else for you, Joe? That's it. Just October 12th, 530 at the Indiana Veterans Memorial Cemetery will be this wonderful event for Samuel Woodfill. And, and that's all I got. Thank you guys so much for coming on the program. Thanks for having us. Again, that is State District Service Officer Joe DeVito and Catherine Williams from the Lanier Mansion joining us here on Veterans Talk.